Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I had a few requests from some of you on how I mix colors and tips on mixing colors. So I thought I would do a simple, super basic color mixing tutorial. I'm gonna walk you through how you can use a limited color palette to mix colors in a way that's easy and talk a, a little bit about how the different colors work together and um, things that I've learned along the way. Although right now I use a pretty expanded color palette that has probably maybe more like 15 colors. For a very long time, I just painted with four simple colors, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, and titanium white. And I stuck with that limited palette. And even to this day, those are the main colors that I use in my paintings. I'll add others um, as needed, but I really stick to these colors. So you can go really far and you can paint a wide variety of subject matter with this limited palette. So whether you're just starting out or you've been painting for a while, but you wanna get back to basics, join me and we'll do some color mixing. So here's my palette. Um, it is a glass palette, as you can see, and I put a piece of gray cardboard underneath. The gray is just really nice. I think it helps, it helps me better judge the saturation of my colors, especially as they'll look on my canvas, because I usually paint onto a canvas that's been primed with a, a neutral background. Um, you can see, maybe just for an example, this like cadmium yellow here, for example, is really, really bright on the gray background. If we were to change this and put a white background, you can see now like the cadmium yellow is still bright, but it's a lot duller in comparison than when it's on the gray. So um, having a white palette, it's, it's still doable, but I prefer to have the gray background so that these bright colors do really read bright because I know they'll look bright when I put them on the canvas. And as you can see, my palette has a lot of colors on it. It's pretty expanded, but that's not how it used to be. When I started out, I was just using three primary colors plus white. And I highly recommend doing that if you're just starting out to keep it simple. You'll learn all about color mixing. You'll learn about all the colors that you can get from just these the three primaries and white. Um, and I think it'll teach you more about color theory than you could learn from books or anything like that. Um, and so the three, the primaries that I'm working with here, it's cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and ultramarine blue. And then I have titanium white on the side to make some of the colors lighter. So the tools I'll be using, I have some paper towels for wiping off my palette knife. And I have this kind of diamond shaped palette knife that you can use for mixing colors. And I highly recommend using a palette knife for mixing colors when you're starting out. Um, I recommend pre-mixing the colors that you're gonna be using for the painting. So look at what you wanna paint and then mix the colors accordingly using the palette knife and then go in with your brush to apply them to the canvas. Um, the reason behind it is that palette knives are really easy to clean up. So as you can see, when I'm mixing these colors, I'll be able to put things down and then I can just cleanly wipe off my knife and move on to the next color without having to um, without having to spend a lot of time cleaning and ensuring that the the mixtures all stay very pure. With a brush, it's a lot harder. You have to either clean the brush really well or use a ton of brushes um, and still things can get really messy. So I recommend if you're starting out, you wanna keep your colors really clean, use a palette knife. Okay, so we have our three primary colors here. And so if you're starting off with a primary palette like this, I recommend first just making mixtures of all the different colors so that you can figure out what colors are available for you for your painting. So let's start out with making orange. So to do this, I'm gonna take some yellow. I'll take, take a decent amount of yellow here. I'll put it down and then I'm gonna take a really small amount of red because cadmium red is just, it's so powerful um, that if you put too much red in, it it can very easily change your whole mixture. See, I put I had so much yellow and I just put this tiny amount of cadmium red and that was enough to already make a very strong orange. And you'll have to play around with the technique of how to mix the colors with the palette knife, but over time you'll get more and more used to using the knife and manipulating these piles of paint and mixing your colors. So I have a pretty nice even orange. I like, I think it's pretty in between the red and the yellow. So I think I will leave it at that. Um, the next color, let's mix a green. So I'll take some more yellow, maybe a little bit more, maybe even more just so that I know I have enough. And then wipe off my palette knife. 
mix in a little bit of blue. And the blue is not quite as strong as the red, I think, so I can mix a little bit more. Right now it looks like I'm getting a green, but it's leaning a lot more towards yellow than towards blue. So I'm gonna go in and take a little bit more, maybe a little bit more than that. It's hard to gauge. You have to kind of figure things out with trial and error when it comes to color mixing. And oftentimes I'll take too little of a color and have to add more. I'll take too much and then have to add a bunch more of the other colors. Um, so it's it's kind of like this iterative process where you just try adjusting the mixture more and more until you finally get it to where you want to be. And I think this is a nice even green tone. So I'll leave it at that. Try to get the last bits off my palette knife here. Okay, so now we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue. The last remaining one is purple. So I'll take a little bit of red, wipe off the knife, take a little bit of blue, and start mixing. And this is a really dark color, so it's kind of hard to tell if it's leaning too red. It might be. Um, but what we can do is we can start to make tints and then we can see if this red is too dark or not. Okay, so now we have the primary colors and the tertiary colors. Um, so let's, let's, these colors are all like pretty pure in that there's no, um, they're not really in the neutral zone. They're much, they're very much in like the saturated color zone. Um, aside from the purple, here it's helpful to notice that out of all these colors, like these look pretty saturated to me, like colors I would get in the crayon box. This one it looks fairly neutral. And so I'm noticing with this palette, um, like this is the purpliest purple that I can get with red and blue. I'm not mixing anything else in. It's just pure red and blue, which is pure purple. And it's like pretty, it's pretty desaturated. So that's one of the helpful things when you're working with a limited palette and you lay out your colors like this. You can already start to see what are the limitations of this palette. I can get a really bright orange. I can get a really bright green, etc. But my purple is going to be really dull. So if I'm going to be painting like purple flowers or something like that, I might not want to paint with this palette. But if I'm going to be painting a landscape that doesn't have purple or a still lifes of like lemons or something like that, then maybe this palette is just fine. And this palette has worked for me for hundreds of paintings. So um, I guess I don't use purple very much, <laughs> but I think it can work for you too. And it's, it can be nice to keep things simple and um, to sort of, yeah, like limit the full range of chroma that you have. Okay, so the next step, let's make tints of these colors to further expand where we could go with this palette. So I'm gonna take some titanium white and I'm just gonna make mixtures, try not to get into the orange. I'll make mixtures of the other colors when they're mixed with white, just to see, okay, if I make these colors lighter, what am I gonna get? So here I have a little pale yellow. Getting a nice, maybe I'll mix a little bit more. Nice pale green. Most reminds me of like sea foam. Oh, it's not in the frame. <laughs> we can move that up here a little bit. There, get my pale green. That's good. And then, oh, I added a lot of blue there, but I think it's okay. Get a nice light blue. And then let's lighten up the purple, see what we get. See, look, it's like a light purple. It's almost maybe like a mauve or it's a very gray, light purple. Very like 
yeah, desaturated purple color. And then we'll do the same with the red, make some pink. And then lastly, I'll just scoot this guy over a little bit. Lastly, we will make a tint of the orange. Great. So now we have all of our fully saturated colors and we have all of the lighter tints for these colors. So we can see what happens when we're using the colors at their full strength and what happens when we're making lighter versions. And here you'll notice that when you add white to the colors, you don't make them, like, it comes at a cost. You make the value lighter, but you decrease the saturation for most of the colors. So you can see that when you add the white, like, this, this pink is less saturated than this red. And, like, well, this is a very light purple. Um, but like this blue is less saturated than this. They're all like a little bit duller, a little bit chalkier. So just be like really careful when you're using white and when you're painting with white um, that you're not using it to make colors brighter. If you want to make colors bright, you use them at their peak saturation. Um, that's where you're going to get the brightest, like highest chroma. And then you can use some of these colors um, if you're painting pastel areas or things like that. But like don't try to use this on the brightest part of a tomato to make it brighter. That's just, it'll, it'll make it really dull. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're using tints. And I, I usually try to be very careful when I'm using white and only use white sparingly or on surfaces that are actually white or things that are actually white because otherwise it can, um, it can really kind of dull out your whole painting. Okay, so now that we've talked about um, making the high chroma mixtures and then mixing the tints, then the last thing that I want to talk about, which is maybe the most important, is mixing tertiary colors. These are the colors that happen in the middle here. These are the mixtures of these high chroma colors. And I think if you're painting like naturalistic paintings, if you're trying to paint landscapes or things that you see in nature or most still lifes, then you're going to be mostly working in this tertiary zone where you're not painting that much with any pure color, but you're gonna be painting with mixtures of all three. So every sort of brown, every neutral color, it's a mixture of all three colors. And oftentimes I find it nice in a painting um, to kind of limit my saturation to the areas that I really want people to be looking at. And then the rest of the painting have it be more of these neutral colors so that they kind of work together supporting those really saturated areas and really making them pop. So hopefully you see that neutral, neutral colors are pretty important. Um, so let's figure out how we mix them. Or how if we're painting something, say we're painting a red building, and we don't want to paint the whole building just this bright, bright red because uh, it might just overpower the painting. So instead what, what we can do is we can make a neutral version. So say this is the red that we really like, and maybe we have some parts of the painting that are this bright red. Um, the rest of the building we can paint in a more desaturated color and the way we can easily desaturate any of our primary colors or even the secondary colors is by adding the complement. So to this red, and this is quite a bit of red, maybe make it a little bit less red so that it's easier because like I said, red is very strong. This cadmium red is very strong. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of green to this red mixture so that you can see how it starts to desaturate the color. And look, so you can see here's the fully saturated red right here. It's super, super bright. Like I think if our eyes are looking at that, they'll probably get tired just from how saturated it is. Versus now we have this kind of calmer, more neutral red that I think is easier. It's easier on the eyes and, um, and then it can act as a support. Like when you put this red next to this red, it's really clear that this is the saturated one and, it, and our eye is attracted to this. So I think um, this would be a really good supporting color to be around this one to really make it pop. Next, let's do the same with yellow. Let's see what some a nice desaturated yellow 
can look like. So I'm gonna get just a little bit, I'm trying to try not to get too much of the purple because I don't want it to be too dark. I just wanna desaturate the yellow a little bit. See, and even that small amount of purple already is making the yellow way less saturated and a lot darker too. It's really bringing down the value. So here is our primary yellow and then here's our desaturated yellow and it's looking a lot more like a yellow ochre which I do have on my palette and it's a great color to use. Um, but yeah, so this, this yellow you can see is much less saturated than the yellow it came from and um, and it's I like if I was making a painting I would probably be using this yellow say if I was painting a lemon maybe like the shadows and most of the lemon I would make in these desaturated yellows and then I would have some points of accent in a really bright yellow okay and then lastly let's do the blue let's take a little bit of blue and take some orange And so here, here it's coming out, it's less saturated, but it's also coming out pretty green, which makes me think that this orange has a lot of red. So you know what I can do? I, I'm like, now it's looking very green. It's looking less like a desaturated blue. I can take a little bit of red, let's see, and then mix it into this green blue. And now it's, it's getting even more neutral. Maybe I'll mix a little bit more blue. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, because if I'm mixing red into green, of course, I'll get more neutral. Um, anyway, it's funny, like mixing colors and talking about mixing colors, it almost feels like doing math on a chalkboard. <laughs> like I just forget everything. But OK, so I put in some more blue. OK, now it's really looking more like a desaturated blue, still kind of leaning green, but um, but yeah, definitely like now, see, look, we're getting these really beautiful muted colors right here. I hope you can imagine how they could be used in painting a still life or landscape. Um, and then you can see just how they look in comparison to the colors around them. And I think even by just adding these colors to the palette, suddenly these colors look so much brighter and more vibrant. And I think that's really cool. Like it just shows the power of like, having these desaturated colors next to your saturated colors really helps the saturated colors shine. And I think sometimes if we really like color, we might wanna put super saturated colors everywhere, but actually when you do that, they all compete with each other so much that I find in my experience, um, no, none of them really stand out, you know? So I like to use the saturated colors pretty sparingly and focus a lot in this neutral tertiary zone. And once you have all these colors mixed, um, then you're pretty ready to do, I, I would say like, yeah, you've, you've mixed these colors, you know what colors are available to you, then you can look at your still life or look at your landscape and adjust some of these mixtures to better match the colors that you'll be painting with. And I hope from doing this exercise, you can see just the huge variety of colors. Like this isn't even, this is just a small amount of the colors that we're able to get from these three primaries plus white. Um, I think it's pretty amazing the variety that we can get. And then I can, I can look at my still life or I can look at my landscape, I can look at my landscape and I can see, does this kind of match the what I'm trying to paint? Um, now kind of going back to what I said earlier about purple, maybe I'm looking and I have a lot of purple in my landscape and I'm looking, or in maybe, probably not a landscape, a really purple landscape would be weird but maybe, it, maybe I'm painting some like purple flowers. And so I'm looking at this and I'm like, this purple is just not cutting it. So what I can do instead, that's when you can start adding new colors to your palette. I would say try to, try to work with a limited palette for a while and work with subjects that you can do in that palette first um, before you start really going wild with colors. Um, but once you're ready, once you realize like, okay, I really need to add some more colors to my palette because I'm not getting these colors that I want, then you can start adding colors. So I just took some alizarin crimson from my palette and that's a really cool red. It leans much more towards like blue. It doesn't really have yellow in it, at least from my understanding. Um, I'm gonna mix it with some ultramarine blue. Maybe I need to mix a little bit more, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I think I'll mix a little bit more ultramarine. 
And then I'm gonna add some white and just show you the purple that we can get when we use alizarin crimson instead of using cadmium red. Okay, so look at that purple compared to the purples that we got with the cadmium red. This purple is like way more purpley, it seems. I think it's like a lot more saturated than these purples here. Um, so this is just like one example of like when you might be ready to move on from the limited palette to expand your palette, why you might want to include certain colors and how you could think about doing that. Um, and then I'd recommend like as you're adding these new colors to the palette, take time to mix them with the other colors, see which combinations that you can get, create kind of color wheels like this just to see um, kind of what the whole palette looks like and what your options are. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you had any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you're interested in a more in-depth look in into color mixing and um, oil painting basics, one of my favorite instructors is Sarah Sedgwick. I learned so much from her courses. Um, she has a lot of online courses. So I'll link to her information in the details of this video so that if you do want to learn more, you can go check her out. And as always, big thank you to my supporters on Patreon. You guys are seriously amazing. Um, I really appreciate you guys supporting these videos and making this channel happen and supporting my art every single day. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are the best. And if you like my videos, if you like my art, and you want to help me make more, consider joining my Patreon at the link below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.